on a day ticket water, I'd usually go in on three different colours. I mean, on this one, I've got the strawberry and condensed milk. Equally so, I'd fish it with the old M blend, white fluoro. Yeah. Or I'd fish it like the other one on an orange fluoro with the old fresh orange. So, what so you're doing, you're, you're kind of covering your options. If and you're then try and find out if one's going a bit more than the other one. Absolutely. Then perhaps it switch all rods to that. Absolutely. Yeah? I mean, I'd always switch all three over because that's the bait on the day, and I'm a great believer in the bait on Absolutely. the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's for say day ticket waters. I'd always go for a bright one because they'd always home in on that. I mean, alternatively, um, I'd use a, like a food bait usually um, on the old big pit that I'm fishing. I'd use these, which are. Um, the cork ball pop-ups around the 12 mil cork ball, so it's nice and buoyant. They're about 15, 16 mil. Yeah, um, yeah. And this and is lovely. something you rolled up yourself. Indeed, I made it out of the old puck of fish Smell base good. mix. They're yeah. lovely, mate. Smell very good. Yeah, yeah. My old, my old, my old favourite those ones. So we've got sort of kind of a quick bite fluoro pop up scenario, and also you'll use this with your your, your food source baits, etc. I mean, I'm with these ones. I'm baiting with um, with the puck of fish. Yeah. Um, so it's like a red fish meal, a nice red fish meal. Yeah. Um, and I want me up bait to match the match the like the freebies that are out there. It's nice and discreet. And again, they're buoyant enough. Absolutely buoyant. That's the thing. Um, as I said, it's a 12 mil cork ball, uh, and then you're making them about 15, 16 mil, drying them out nicely. I always put a couple of drips of the old flavour in there after. Just to give them a little rip. But I can't tell you what, them I again. can't tell you what flavour it is. Simon. <laughs> you secret boys, I tell you. <laughs> Okay, so essentially that's the chod rig in working process. Rig. Indeed. Um, I'll quickly go into the hook section okay. um, because that's another, another thing that's critical. I mean, as you can see here, I'm using a, a size 6 Drennan Continental Boily Hook. Okay? It's got an outturned eye, it's got an in-turn point, it's good and strong, and I caught a fair few fish on that. Yeah. Equally so, you use it with like a size 5 stiff rigger or a size 6 chodder, you know, just depending on the water you're fishing. I mean, the size 6 chodder is like that little bit thicker wire, yeah, little bit, bit stronger. To it, yeah. yeah, exactly. And both of those other ones, the stiff rigger and the chodder, have got straight points, so you've got like increased prickability essentially. Of course, but, yeah. But these ones with the intern point, obviously, you haven't got as much prickability, but once that really sharp hook point has touched part of the lip, they pull away, they're hooked, and it's like and near it's enough for guarantee. Yeah. Guaranteed now, what about fish. the actual hook link material we've got right. here? Okay, the hook link material, I've played around with it over the years, and I've finally come up with, for most of my fishing, I use a 20 pound ESP bristle filament um, as standard. The reason being is the 15 is great for like your smaller sizes of hooks. Yeah, okay. So, say for example, I was using a smaller size 6 pattern, like a size 6 stiff rigger or something like that. It's more balanced, right, okay, okay, in relation to the hook size. Um, a size five stiff rigger or a size six continental boiler, I'd always use the twenty. Uh, and the reason being is it's got like that extra stiffness. So the idea of the chod rig is that what you're creating is um, an extended hook shank. If you can imagine that bristle filament there, yeah, is like an extended long shank of an hook. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So right with you. There's, yep. there's a key point on it that you don't want any twist in it. It's got to be perfectly straight. Okay. As you see there. I can. Yeah. So I mean. So it's it, going to be very critical when we're tying this up. Not totally to critical. The, yeah. The trouble is, if you've got twist in it, as it yeah. comes off the swivel, it's going to kick the hook off to one side. Okay. So it's going to be awkward as it goes into the carp's mouth. So the hook bait will be going in, but the hook will be skewed off to one side. Okay. So you've always got Which could to result in not great hook holes, potentially losing some. Yeah, or a, it? a hook hold on the extremity of the mouth, which, like you say, will let, like result in a lost fish, and we don't want any of those. So you, you can you can essentially curve that perfectly, and it'll always have the perfect kind of like uh, curve in it there, and it won't have any twist or kinks. Now, again, I've seen people fishing this in different ways. Some people almost like do a really big curve. Yeah. Like a withy pull rig or something okay. like that. Yeah. I mean, that's fine because they've caught on it. I know a lot of people are caught on it. But the way I was taught is just to have the barest minimum of a, of a so curve. So, literally, you it. are just literally following the shank of this hook through, aren't you? I can Indeed. see that there. You're getting the curve through. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. just exaggerating the pattern of the hook, really, yeah. isn't it? Well, obviously, as you can see, um, I almost follow my thumb. If you can see the curvature of your thumb there, yeah. you almost want to follow the curvature of your thumb. Now, just going a little bit more in depth, I use a two-turn blood knot, 
okay. to attach it to the swivel there, and then you blob it at the end. Um, it might say I don't use a blood knot for any other knots in my fishing, but for with this, it's perfectly adequate, and I've never had it fail. Okay. Okay. The okay. length for your hook, your length for your hook sen section is also critical. I mean, like there, you're looking at about one and a half, two inches of hook section. I know people use it longer. I've seen people catch on 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 longer hook sections or even shorter hook sections. Yeah, sure. But what about you know one and a half, two inches is something that I've found to be successful. Um, to attach the, the actual bristle, bristle filament onto your hook, I use a seven turn Domhoff or Snood knot. Okay, now, I mean, that's yeah. a knot, I mean, it took me ages to try and, <laughs> try and get, I had a nightmare with it, you know. Sitting there evening after oh, evening well, practicing. I tried, absolutely, I mean, this one morning I woke up and I thought, I'm going to learn the Domhoff <laughs> knot, and I eventually got it, and now it's something I use exclusively for this rig, purely because you've got no wrap, as you can see there. That's right, yeah. yeah? Yeah. on the outside of the knot, everything's on the inside of the knot. The other thing that's critical is the size of your D. I mean, as you can see there, it's like the yeah. perfect little D, um, perfect little shape. Essentially, what you've done is you've taken the tag end of the, of the bristle filament, passed Hunted it through, through the eye, yeah. lobbed it off. Now, again, it's critical. What you have to do is I've got like a little tool, a crochet needle, that I use to shape that D perfectly because you want to bring this back bit here up against the bottom of the knot. You don't want a gap that your little mini ring will actually lodge into. In. Yeah, so everything's okay. got to be pushed forward. So we can get this nice and free running around the D. It's not going to get trapped anywhere and allow for, for good movement That's of the pop-up. I mean, I, I think the rig just offers the best of both worlds, to be honest with you. You've got your, your suck and blow properties, yeah. okay, your D-rig properties, and you've got your flip-round properties with the curvature of the hook section. So, I mean, that's something I've got a lot of confidence in, but I only got confidence in it once I started fishing it properly and once I started catching on it, so yeah. It, I mean, it seems it, it essentially fairly complicated, but not. Once you kind of know what you're doing with this mm -hmm. rig, yep. and you've, you've given us a brilliant in-depth chat today about this, Jamie, and showed us all the points of the do's and the don'ts, mm. but I can now obviously see, once all the time and care is done in the preparation of it, this could actually be a very devastating rig. Absolutely, I mean, I'd, I'd give it a go, Simon, like, and uh, I hope to hear that you've caught a few on it in the near future. <laughs> I shall let you know, mate, that's Wicked. for sure. Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks very much, Jamie. No problem. Cheers.